Good evening, guys. I'm glad you're all here. Thank you very much for joining me. I have been working all day to put together this report about the quiet earthquakes, or what is called episodic tremors. Uh, they're always a day behind on the pnsn.org website. There is uh, 850 earthquakes listed here for yesterday. USGS has 429 listed for the last 30 days. They don't list all the episodic earthquakes. In fact, the last earthquake they did report was a magnitude 2.9 along uh, the Blanco Fracture Zone down here. Here we got the Cascadia Subduction Zone. In fact, for the 30th, which I am, or I showed you, uh, they only have one reported here on the 30th, a magnitude 1.6 Nevada. I also have drawn on here the hazard map. Which area USGS figures is the highest risk for a major earthquake? And you can see we got down here by Medford, uh, the Gordo Plate, and yeah, going down towards uh, Sacramento, California. Basically, an episodic tremor is a vibration, a rumble. It's not what they classify as a real earthquake, a sudden jolt. These low rumblings, the vibration, are imperceivable to human beings and do not cause damage, they say. Now, they say, and I do not agree with this, accumulated stress would be released from these tremors decreasing the risk of a catastrophic earthquake. However, if the slow slip event occurs down dip of the seismogenic zone, it may load the region with stress. The probability of a great earthquake, moment magnitude a scale of greater than 8.0, occurring has been suggested to be 30 times greater during an ETS event than otherwise. Um, there was one geologist there, uh, part of the Cascadia subduction zone, who stated that during the time of ETS events, they would not park in underground parking lots. These events happen about every 14 months and last for about two weeks. These areas of the slow slip earthquakes are also locked zones of the Cascadia um, fault zone. So I noticed up over here, most of these earthquakes were occurring uh, near the southern end of Vancouver Island. So spending all day, I looked up GPS stations and I looked up how much uplift has been going on or how much uh, deflation has been going on. The areas in red are uplift. The areas in orange are where it goes up and down, um, but hasn't been showing any extreme uplift and hasn't been showing any uh, decrease in the ground. Yellow is decrease in the ground movement or it's been going down. Now up over here is one of the boreholes or one of the uh, monitors for GPS, not boreholes, excuse me. H-O-L-B, and I'll bring it down. Now, this is the direction for east that they're measuring. This is the direction for north, and this is total uplift. I had noticed that since they started monitoring back in 1994, the ground has risen probably about 50 millimeters, which is about 2 inches. Back in 2016, the ground did a jump. Uh, let's see, let's pull this over and see how high it jumped. Um, I have to pull it over more for you. About 150 millimeters. 5.9 inches, which is almost 6 inches. Right there, and you can see it's slowly been going up since they've been monitoring it. This other GPS station currently has uplift of about 2.5 inches. They started monitoring back in 2010. Here we got, oh, probably minus 15. And then currently, let me pull it over. It is up 
to, oh, I went up too far, sorry. Let's bring this up, which is, let me bring it over again, 40 millimeter. So I would say we got about 55 millimeters since they started recording back in 2010. So 2.17 inches, but I did not um, add in some of this other stuff. And I didn't add in way down here by 20 or minus 20. So from its low to its real high, it's probably risen about two and a half inches since just before 2010. Back in 1946, they did have a 7.3. Um, in 1918, a 7.0 they figured. And I got other GPS stations that I drew in, marked out which ones were the uplift in red. Yellow is where it's actually going down, surprisingly. And you can just follow it along. Now this is where um, the quiet tremors have been occurring. And we got the Juan de Fuca plate seducting under the North American plate. Here's another image of the Vancouver Island and its area. We have the Explorer plate over here. And this is all locked, building up pressure. Here's another image of what's going on. Here's the arrow showing the location of Vancouver Island. This is where the uh, uh, tremors are going on. This is an area where they figured they can have thrust earthquakes. And it shows you the Juan de Fuca plate. Over here on the left, subducting, and there it shows the locked zone. The area of deformation, which is causing uplift. And another image of the uh, Vancouver Island. Once again, there's the Explorer plate. This is an area that's all locked, building up pressure. Another thing that's interesting about these episodic tremors is they'll move. And then they go back. It's like uh, bumper cars. They move forward a little bit along the fault zone. And then they slide back. So they actually don't make any progress in the movement of the fault. Here's another image of the plate boundary. I don't know if you can tell very well. I'll try and make this bigger. But every 14 months, it makes this rotation. See that there along the... Uh, west coast of the u.s parts of it from uh, the cascadia subduction zone uh, the pacific plate is moving northwest a little bit and then we got this rotation that happens every 14 months there hasn't been any earthquakes in the last 30 days according to usgs for vancouver island so in my opinion because of that and with these quiet quakes that would make the risk of an earthquake uh, fairly significant. So I want to come down along because I drew out uh, what I could find for GPS stations. This one here uh, went up and down. Uh, it was rising, but um, not extremely. Ocean Shores was another area where there's been uplift. Um, as you go further inland, the uplift was less. And then there was this one area which was really weird near Raymond. Let me show you that one. Let me pull it down to the... Look at this. Back in um, last year, 2021, just kind of like up and down, not doing much, you know, breathing. But in 2021, it took a giant leap. It took a giant breath. In, in two different um, episodes. Let me bring it over so you can see this. That probably happened at the end of 2021. You come down here and see the years, the dates. They don't break it down in months too well. And there was an uplift. Let's pull this over. So we can see how high it was, that jump. Um, 60 millimeters. 
So that would be about 2.4 inches. Let me pull it down here. And I'll go back over. This here is the data once they have it all cleaned up and analyzed. Let me come up a little bit farther. There you go. All the way at the top of the box and I'll pull it back over here. So actually it rose more than 2.4 inches. And this is when they cleaned up all the data and figured out how much it rose and how much it fell. I don't have any earthquakes uh, that I posted for this area. Back in uh, 1989, um, there was a 4.9 and off over here. Yeah, we got Mount Rainier and that's becoming more active and quieter. Now along here, this was hardly any uplift whatsoever. Um, seaside, Canyon Beach, Rockaway Beach, uh, Pacific City. Yeah, very little up, uplift. But when you got down to this other locked boundary by um, the Mendocino Triple Junction, yeah, this is where there's lots of uplift going on too. And it extends, yeah, Brookings, uh, Crescent City. And then there was another one, which is probably completely unrelated. I didn't mark them all out all the GPS stations, but there was one over by Grass Valley, an area of uplift, which was way in the interior. I don't see it here. I probably didn't draw it out big enough where I could find it. Scientists figure in this area here, there is enough stress built up for a magnitude eight or greater earthquake. And there's been quite a few earthquakes in this location. You can see this is for 30 days. And let me pull it. There's the Blanco Fracture Zone. That one there was a 5.1. And let me go back up here. Look how bare that is. Absolutely nothing. The calm before the storm? Yeah, you tell me. This too is the area where they had that uh, probably 9.0 earthquake back in the 1700s where it ruptured and then ended up ripping the whole Cascadia fault zone. Here we got Vancouver Island. It shows you all the different earthquakes. Okay, this one here was a month ago. Well, that's way out there. Uh, the yellow one was a month ago. That was a 2.0. That one was on Valentine's Day, February 14th. And this one here, January 26th, a 1.7. This is all they're reporting on EarthquakeTrack.com. Uh, 1.7, February 6th, um, 1.7, February 12th. January 31st, a 1.8. January 23rd, a 1.5. February 6th, a 1.7. That is all they are reporting. Oh, and there's one more right there. Uh, January 21st, a 2.2. That's all they've had since the beginning of the year. Earthquakes in Cascadia. Mega thrust events with a magnitude that may exceed. Can you imagine if there was a magnitude 9.5 or a 10? Occur every 200 to 600 years on the inner plate boundary where it is locked west of Vancouver Island. Actually, all along the Vancouver Island is locked according to new data. The last mega thrust event occurred in 1700 with a magnitude estimated to be around a 9. And as you should know, the longer the fault zone, the larger the potential for an earthquake. Uh, the Cascadia subduction zone extends 1,100 kilometers from northern California to northern Vancouver Island. So what are your thoughts? Like I said, I've been working on this all day, drawing up the little circles, looking at the depth 
um, the locked zones, etc. Um, what do you think? Please put those comments down below. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Please stay safe. And I will talk to you later. God bless you. Bye.